Unfortunately, right now, my hair is in cornrows because I'm about to let you in on a controversial subject that not a lot of people know about. It's a show that I have wanted to do for a long time. In fact, ever since we started The Tyra Show. But then I told my, my staff, and my staff is very diverse about this show, a portion of them, a lot of my producers that happen to be white, were like, Tyra, what are you talking about? This black hair woman thing, what? They didn't understand, and I had to explain to them that it's a topic that is so heated, it is so charged in the African American community and in a lot of other cultures that Chris Rock actually spent two years of his life making a movie about it, about after his four-year-old daughter, Lola, asked him, Daddy, how come I don't have good hair? Now, the movie just debuted at Sundance, and Chris Rock, he even asked me personally, he came to my offices personally, and wanted me to use a clip from the Tyra show for it, and his uh, documentary or his movie is called Good Hair. Now, uh, when black women talk about good hair, you hear things like hair that's not kinky or coarse or nappy, um, hair like an afro that's not like an afro. You hear, you know, when they say good hair, a lot of them are saying hair that is smooth and straight like a white girl's or an Indian girl's, or sometimes a Puerto Rican girl's. And they spend thousands of dollars and countless hours using chemical relaxers and putting weaves in their hair to get it. And I just said they a lot. I should say we. This is Tahita, and she's thinking about going back to her natural hair. What's your natural hair like? Um, it's coarse. Coarse. Nothing straight about it. OK. Um, so is mine. <laughs> My natural hair is coarse. And. Um, it's just something that I've been contemplating on, but haven't really went full force with it because I'm thinking that I'm not going to get a lot of compliments that I used to get. Um, I'm not going to look as pretty as I mm -hmm. usually would if I had the, the weave or the extensions. Mm -hmm. um, How much money have you spent on um, keeping your hair straight? Wow, over $20,000. Twenty thousand dollars. Over twenty thousand dollars. Wow. I probably spent even more than that. Yeah. I know the number sounds crazy, but when you add it up, it's it you know, did you guys know that black women spend more money on hair products than any other culture in America? Yes. We make up like six, seven percent of the of the society in America, black women, but we spend eighty percent of the hundred percent of hair product. That's how much we spend. Eighty percent of all hair product goes to black women. Okay, so you're contemplating this natural thing. Why, why? Why do you want to go natural? Because over the years, I've damaged my hair really, mm -hmm. really bad to the point I can't even wear it, wear it out unless I have it relaxed or, you know, something like that. I heard that you have issues with bills because you spend so much money yes. on your hair. Yes. I have went to the extreme of not paying a bill or two to get my hair Where done. Well, to help Tahita make her decision, we put together a panel of women who have varying opinions on natural hair. Um, so I have to ask you guys, do you believe that there is a such thing as good hair? Who Absolutely. To... I have the best hair in Atlanta. I have the white girl flow, and my hair does this. You have the what? The white girl flow. The white girl flow? Yes. Okay, explain to me what the white girl <laughs> flow is. Everybody's like, oh my god, did you just say that? <laughs> yeah, I could do this. And like a lot of black girls just can't do that with their hair, and they honestly just can't because they don't have good quality hair, and I do. Okay. <laughs> and and, and Kel, uh, Akia, what do you have to say about the white girl flow? I think I've that, never heard that before, actually. <laughs> I wouldn't put it like that per se, but um, we do stay in a Eurocentric lifestyle. Um, we've been in America. Even though we came here unwillingly, we're here now, and we've adapted to this way, and we're accustomed. And I think that it's more professional. It looks better when you look at it. Um, the appearance isn't coarse or kinky or matted. The term nappy hair is always a term of contempt, so no one was ever saying you got nappy hair by saying you got good hair. So I technically do think that nappy hair would be considered a bad gray okay, hair. Okay, but you guys are talking about, like, there's a difference, and I think it's very, very, very important, especially for our audience at home, the women that are not black, to understand the different types of hair. Right. Because, Shay, you straighten yes. your hair chemically? Yes. Okay, so naturally your hair is? Very nappy. Like how mine is right now. Like I braided my hair natural, it's, so it's, it's really kinky. curly and coarse. Yeah. Okay. So, but you straighten your hair. Yeah. So, is that good hair to you, or is that nappy hair straightened? It's amazing hair to me when my hair straight. Speaking for a person who has um, hair 
I think that my hair is more matted and coarse and kinky. I have a kitchen in the back, what black women like to call kitchens because it's real coarse. It looks like a, a scarring pad. Um, women with more loosely coiled hair, um, Tyra, like I think that you have. My hair is not loosely coiled. My hair would never lay like lay down like that. Listen, what well, with some gel well, and a have, toothbrush? Right, I, I had to use <laughs> mag chemicals. <laughs> exactly, I had to use mag chemicals. <laughs> I had to use mag chemical on my hair for it to for it to lay down. Yeah. And I think it's more manageable with hair that's less. Loose, loosely coral. You why coil. does your hair have to lay down? That's the question. Why do you have to hair, have a hairstyle that's laying down? That's just like straightening anyway. Well, why do I have to have an afro to t technically define me as being black? I think that I'm black and I think that I'm a strong black woman and in today's society, I think that straight hair is just more acceptable. You don't have to have an afro to be a strong black woman, but you have to not hate on what you really are to be a strong black woman. You're but who natural am I? State. I'm American. And You're in an America, American, but America has nothing to do with hair. We have put this on ourselves. We have made ourselves hate the texture of our hair. We have let other people. I don't ideas. hate the texture of my hair, but coming from the African and my African descent, when we came into this country, we didn't have African combs to comb our hair with, so we had to adapt. Having kinky hair was an evolutionary adaption in Africa. We got kinky hair. You don't have to have a comb to comb your hair. There are other ways to style your hair. The problem with black women is we have to learn how to style and treat our natural hair and stop trying to conform to something that is not natural and is unhealthy for our hair. Akia, Which takes you a lot of preparation. Ooh, my hair is very healthy. Akia, I your hair can't be healthy with relaxers. My hair is very healthy. Relaxers do not make your hair healthy. I don't care how shiny it looks. I don't care how much I it disagree. bounces. When you put that chemical on your hair, it is sucking moisture out of your hair. It is breaking your natural hair down. I have proof. I used to relax my hair. But I growing have your dreads, you, you don't wash your hair for three I months. I wash my hair even. every day. When you, every when you first, day. when you you first got the dress. you wash your hair every day? No. When I you wash got... your hair every day now, but when you first when when I first started getting dress, dressed, it was I, I matted wash... and kinky and nappy. No. You couldn't wash your See, hair for three months. I know right. the preparation that, that no. it takes. That is the misconception of the dress. Uh, any, wow. Anybody in the audience not black uh, confused right now or understanding what's going on? <laughs> anybody? Why don't, well, well, even some <laughs> why don't you come to the mic? people are confused. Why don't you come to the mic with the pink sweater? And, and explain to us what you're confused about, because I can break it down for you, maybe. Um, the biggest thing I don't understand is not washing your hair every day. Well, actually, it's not good for people, uh, for a lot of people, even people with straight hair, to not wash your hair every day. A lot of hairdressers are saying that now, that it's, it's not good because it depletes your hair with moisture, of moisture. Mm -hmm. But one thing I can explain, um, black women don't wash, a lot of us don't wash our hair every day because our hair tends to be drier, and the more we wash it, the more it dries out. Also, the chemical straightening and the, 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 all the process that we use to straighten it takes so long, it would be almost impossible to straighten it every single day. So you don't wash it every day. And it kind of tends to get better with time after a couple of days, kind of like marinating some chicken. You know, where like <laughs> put it in the right. fridge That's and after a couple of days, it just kind of starts looking better as well. You, so that's I'm not why. saying over perm and over process your hair. It's ways to take care of your hair using chemicals. And even if you don't, if your hair is naturally more loosely coiled, you still need that preparation. Okay, so Tahita, you have heard b both sides of this story. Do you want to go natural or do you want to this stay straight? This is why it's making it so hard because I want to go natural, but then I don't know how people would perceive me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how people would take to me, you know, with my natural hair because a lot of people never seen me do you with wanna natural try? hair. Um, yes. Yeah. You I, do? I'll try it. Doesn't hurt to try. Yeah. I'll try it. Okay. Well, I'm going to send you backstage right now. I actually have some really great hairdressers that are going to make your hair a beautiful natural texture. So go on there back now. Okay. Okay. You didn't know, girl, right now. <laughs> It's a hit at the end of the show, what she looks like natural. We'll be right back. Hey, Tyre, what's up? It's AJ Johnson here from the AJ Salon in the Windy City here in Chicago. Okay, good hair, I hate that term. Actually, if you have hair on your head, then you have good hair. What I hate more than anything are these, split ends. So you do away with those, then everybody can have good hair. Good hair, and um, that's hair that a lot of black women say is smooth, it's silky, it's long, it's not kinky, it's not coarse. 
the pressure to have that starts in childhood for many African-American women. So we wanted to check in with some very young, young girls to see how they felt about their hair. Check these kids out. I'm Kiana and I'm eight. I'm Kalaza and I'm five. I'm Shania and I'm six. I'm a little and I'm five. One of my producers joined the girls to get to the root of the matter. Okay, everybody, I want you to describe your own hair. I like my hair because it's soft and long. I don't like my hair because it's nappy. I like my hair when it's relaxed. How does it feel when they relax your hair? When I get my hair relaxed, it burns, but I like it because it's straight and it's like my friends at school. I like my mom to cut my hair so the kids to stop making fun of me. The kids make fun of you at school? Yes. And how does it make you feel when the kids do that to you? They make me feel sad. Next, our producer asked the girls, what is bad hair? Bad hair is frizzy hair, poofy hair. If people talk about your hair, is bad. When I might see people with nappy hair, I think they're low, 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 lower class. Now, Shania, you have something that you brought today, right? I brought my hand on my tan wig. Tell me why. I think people like me better when I have my hand on my tan wig on, because my hair is long and pretty. And sadly, all the girls had one thing in common. So now, let's talk about the hair that you don't like at all, the hair that you would never want to have, OK? It's nappy and it's gross. I think white people have better hair than black people. So let's talk to their moms. We have I got teary. <laughs> <laughs> All the moms are like crying. Oh my god, my poor babies, my poor black girls. So um, Mecca, your daughter Shania, she commented that she does not like her hair. She really made me tear up with the Hannah Montana wig. That's why I'm tearing up right now. Yeah, she loves it. Most of the kids, she hang around in white, so she's like, Mommy, I want my hair like hers, or can you put a perm in my hair? I'm like, Shania, you're sick. She can't mm -hmm. get a perm. So, How like... How does it make you feel that she only feels really pretty and accepted with a Hannah Montana wig on? Because even Hannah Montana, the real Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus, that's not even her hair. I know. <laughs> right? It's well. not. I feel kind of bad sometimes, but I tell her, like, your hair is beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. she she doesn't need long hair like yeah. that. Her hair is long if I straighten it. Sometimes I straighten it with the, um, the, the hot comb or the flat iron, but I'm not going to put a perm in it. She's too young. You're not going to chemically straighten her hair? No. Good. She's too young. Um, okay, and then Shantae, um, your daughter, Malia, you, t to produce your daughter, um, you did something to make her how she is. What did you do? I decided at 11 years old I'd have a baby outside of my race so she could have better hair. You decided at 11 years old that you were going to have... A... I was teased, called nappy head, bald headed. So I decided to, to have a baby outside of your race. And what yeah. race did you decide to have a baby with? My daughter's half Latino. She's half Latin. All right. And um, when mm -hmm. you look at children that have hair that is coarser, what does that make you think? Like me, when I was growing up, low class and poor. You, and your daughter was the one that said that, that kinky your hair is low class. Yeah. That she got that from her mom. Okay. And um, then we have Mary, Kalaisha's yes. mom. You were tearing up a lot when you were watching that, and me, well, looking at you made me tear, but I didn't know why you were tearing. <laughs> it's her fault because when she comes home from school, the kids tease her because her hair is so long. And because it's so good, and when she come home, she's crying. They have pulled handfuls of her hair out of her head before. And when she comes home, she says, Mommy, can you just cut my hair so it can look like everybody else's, so they can leave me alone? So mm -hmm. it's, it's very hurtful for her to come home. And I tell her, Kalasia, you're you. Your hair is you. Everybody is different. You accept yourself mm -hmm. the way you are. and. Some people don't feel good about themselves, so they tease others mm -hmm. to make themselves feel good. Shante, do you wish that your daughter, if you, do you wish that you could have had a daughter, like her daughter, with long hair like that? Yeah, my daughter's hair is without, I mean, without having to go outside of your race to get it? No. No? I've never dated an African-American. 
Never. Because you don't want to have offspring. You don't want to make the mistake of falling in love with a black man nope. and having some kinky-headed babies. Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. And then we have Dawn. Dawn, uh, your daughter, Kiana, um, you are a white mom. Correct. And you've had a, an interracial child. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me about how you feel about your daughter's hair. Um, I, I relax it and I put weave in it because it's just easier for me to manage. Wait, how old is she? She's eight. She's eight and you put weave in her hair? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, and she's got thick hair, but, you know, we get up in the morning and it's easier for me to unwrap her hair and go than sit there and put ponytails in it. Um, being a mom that had a child of color, did you ever think to maybe get taught of how, how to do her hair? I, I have, and I've learned, but... but you without know, the relaxers at such a young age? Without the chemicals yeah, on your scalp? Yeah, but my life, it, and really, it's selfish. I mean, I'm the one that's doing it for me because my life is so busy that I don't have the time to sit mm -hmm. there and do her hair in the morning or do it in the evening. And then we have um, Michelle, and you're Rainisha's mom. Yep. And uh, tell me, how old your daughter? She's three. And uh, how do you do her hair? I relax her hair also. You chemically straighten your three-year-old daughter's hair? Yep. You chemically straighten her hair? Yep. And when did this start? Um, this started about four months ago. Um, when she was born, she had really good hair. She had what hair? She had really good hair. And which what does is, that mean? Um, I consider good hair nice and curly, soft. Um, about two and a half years old, it started getting nappy. So I tried to blow dry it, straighten it. Um, I tried everything, it doesn't work. And now that I perm my daughter's hair, she feels comfortable with me doing her hair. I could put a comb through it. I could, it's easy to manage. It doesn't take long, she doesn't cry, and she loves it. Of course, every little black she girl cries it. when her hair is done and <laughs> getting done and the mama's combing the, yeah. you know, the comb through it to get that ponytail. But I, putting a relaxer that early, I don't know. That To me, that seems like not healthy, mentally and physically for the child. Well, I think, if it was, if it wasn't, then they wouldn't make it for young kids. Three years old? I don't know if it's for three years old. Uh, we'll be right back. You know, good hair is something that comes up every day. We named our salon Happy to be Nappy because we want our clients to love their natural hair. Whether your hair is straight, wavy, or even curly is solely up to you. What bugs me is when parents come in and say, my daughter's hair is ugly, nappy, they don't know what to do with it, and hopefully we can figure it out. No little girl should feel that their hair is bad. about the pressure to conform to the idea of good hair in the African-American community. And again, that's hair that a lot of black women say is, is not an afro, hair that is smooth, hair that is straight, like a Caucasian woman, like a, like a Indian woman, like an Asian woman. Um, and it's a pressure that even their preschool daughters feel. Now, before the break, Michelle admitted that she relaxes her three-year-old daughter, Rainisha's hair, three years old, and she puts chemical straightener on her daughter's hair. Uh, we have some video of this. Check it out. Hi, Tyra. This is my daughter, Rainisha. She's three years old, and I've been perming her hair for about four months now. As you can see, Tyra, all this on the edges, that's what we call kitchens, and those are what we're going to fix with the perm. Before I started putting perms on her hair, she would not let me comb it. See that? Ow! That's why. You like getting your hair from Run Asia? Yeah. Why? You want it like the girls on the box? Yes. As Michelle adds the chemicals to Renesha's hair, her discomfort is quite apparent. Ow! I know. Ow! This is why she gets the perm. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Thank God for perms. Ow! Does it burn? Where does it burn at? All right, we're ready to wash. My eyes! Just keep your eyes closed. <laughs> Want me to wipe your eyes? Yes. Although the process was difficult for both, mother and daughter are pleased with the end results. You like it? Yes. Why? Can't feel it. It looks cute? Yes. 
Woo, that was like a ton of like, oh my God, emotions and pain and then smiles. And even when she was smiling, it was hurting me. When your daughter is saying, mommy, it burns, it burns, because she has chemicals on her mm -hmm. hair and she's three years old, what does that make you feel like? It makes me feel bad, so that's why I choose not to leave it in her hair for that long. You just do like a quick rinse a quick, in and out. Yep. How did you feel about your hair growing up when you were little? Um, I got my perm early, around 12 years old. So if I could have got it younger, I would have got it younger. Got it younger. Let me explain what, what perm means. In the African-American community, we call a perm straightening hair. Mm -hmm. I know that in, in other cultures, when you say perm, it means it's curly. curly. We mean straightening or relaxing the hair. Michelle's sister, um, Ebony, is, is with us in the audience now. Hi, Ebony. How do you feel about your Hi, sister Tyra. straightening your niece's hair, who's three years old? Um, I oppose to it. I really don't agree with it. My niece has very beautiful hair, and I feel as a young African-American girl that a mother should let their child love their natural beauty. Mm -hmm. I had my hair young, um, permed at a young age, and I didn't agree with it. That's why my hair was so messed up. It messes up their hair, and I think natural beauty is beautiful. And when your sister says that to you, I'm sure she says it to you. Not to mind her business. You tell her to mind her business. <laughs> well, with us are the authors of Hair Story, Untangling the Roots of Black Hair in America, Ayanna Bird and Lori Tharps. Explain to us uh, about our hair, black women's hair, and why it is such, such this, this issue for us. I think the first thing people need to understand is the idea that good hair, these, this term good hair, was not a beauty term, it was a survival term that came out of slavery. And that um, women and men who had hair that was silkier, curlier, looser, meaning they were connected to the white man, the master, that meant that they were more likely to have a, um, a, a higher chance of being freed when the master died, perhaps being a slave that was in the house, which meant more access to education, better food, clothing, warmth, mm -hmm. you know, the necessities of life. So we were not talking about slaves walking around saying, I'm cute. It was slaves walking around saying, if I have this hair, I might have a chance mm -hmm. at a better chance of life and survival. Because what is it really? It's connected to being the master's daughter or exactly, son. Exactly, exactly. So, and it's, like I said, it was men and women. We're not mm -hmm. even just talking about something for women. And so this idea has carried over. Um, we, we say that, you know, these concepts were kind of embedded into our cultural psyche and it never went away. We were never, like, unbrainwashed, if you will, once slavery was mm -hmm. removed. And we've maintained these terms. And so part of the problem is that um, people don't understand the history of our hair. And that's why we wrote the book so that people understood where the pain mm -hmm. comes from with these, um, with the way our hair looks and what it meant to us in terms of survival. We have the, 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 the daughters of all of these women on our stage. I want to talk to these kids. Come on out, kitties. Pretty girls. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Okay, we'll be right back. We're going to talk to these kids when we come back. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're back and, and talking with girls about how they feel about their hair. Little girls, little baby girls. Shania, tell me about your hair, Shania. Tell me about that Hannah Montana wig that you wear. Why do you like to wear that Hannah Montana wig? Because it's cool. Because it's cool? And what does it make you feel like when you wear it? Happy. Makes you feel happy. And how do you feel when you don't have your Hannah Montana wig on? I feel sad. Why do you feel sad? Because I really love that wig and I want to wear it all times and every day. You want to wear it every day? Is it because you like Hannah Montana or because you don't like your hair? Because I don't like my hair always. You don't like your hair. I think your hair is so pretty. Thank you. I like your little twisties with your ballies. Thank you. And your barrettes, they're really pretty. Thank you. Want to see a picture you. of me when I was your age? My hair wasn't as groomed as yours, <laughs> but it was still pretty. I have hair just like you. Just like you. I don't have Hannah Montana hair. I have a Hannah Montana wig, too, that I take on and put off. <laughs> I do. OK, let's go to Malia now. Hi, Malia. 
Tell me how you feel about your hair. Um, it's cute. It's cute? Is there a such thing as bad hair? Tell me what bad hair is. Um, when, um, when you have poof. When it's poof? <laughs> yeah? I know people are probably confused at home because maybe people that are not black are looking at Malia's hair and going, hers looks kind of poofy and kind of big, mm -hmm. but the actual texture of it tends to be straighter on a wave. So it's not like, it's not like a tight afro, like old Michael Jackson kind of tight <laughs> hair. It's poofy, but it still has a wave to it. And in the black community, that's considered better to a lot of people, not everybody, but to a lot of people in the black community. Okay, we're gonna move on to Kalasha. Let me see your hair, Kalasha. Turn around. So your hair is really long and you want your mommy to, you want your mommy to... Cut my hair. You want her to cut it? Yes. Tell me why. So the kids to stop messing with my hair. They mess with it? Yes. What do they say? They say, I smell like boo-boo. <laughs> no. They say you smell like boo-boo because your hair is so long? Yes. They're crazy. They're crazy. Your hair looks pretty, and I'm going to tell those kids to stop making fun of you. A lot of the times when you want something that somebody else does, we tell people that they smell like boo-boo. But really, we really say, oh, my God, I want your hair so badly. That's what they're really saying. Okay. All right, so let's move on to Kiana now. Kiana, you are what? How old are you again? Eight. Okay. And so your mom says that she has a hard time doing your hair. She, yeah. cause she's like, it's just hard. She don't have time. <laughs> and so you, you get your hair what? Relaxed. You get it relaxed. And you got a couple other things up in there here. What else you got in there? Um, weave. You have some weave. Doesn't it hurt to get hair tracks sewn up in there? It hurts. How does it make you feel when you don't have weave in your hair? Happy. It makes you feel happy when it's not in there. Yeah. So then why do you put it there? She wants it in there. Shh. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Where's that coming from, Mom? I wasn't expecting that. Well, she likes it. I mean, she goes to school with her hair done, and everybody compliments her, and she's like on cloud nine. But she said that she's happy with it out, and it makes you happy. It looks good. It looks good. It's interesting, though, because a lot of times in interracial relationships, um, like the Caucasian mom, the white mom, really loves the black culture, mm -hmm. and she loves all those different things about the black culture, the hair, the black man's skin, the whole, <laughs> you know, the food, the differentness from right. your culture, that it's different and interesting. Right. And I find it interesting that you're looking at her hair is bad, and that you want it to look more like yours. I just, I just want it to look nice. I mean, you know, I don't, it's easier for me to manage like this. I don't A weave know is not easy, mama. It's easier than sitting there for an hour in the morning putting ponytails in. But she's saying that it makes her feel better when it's not there. Do you understand what that does yeah. to her self-esteem? I mean, if she doesn't want it in, she's never told me that. So if she doesn't want it in, then I won't put it in. Okay, we're gonna go to Rainisha now. Hi. I saw you and you were getting your hair straightened and you were getting relaxer or we call perm in your hair, Anisha. And I, I saw that it hurt. Did it hurt a little with the perm? Yes. Yes? Okay. I'm sorry that it hurt. I wish you could wear little pom-poms like I used to wear when I was your age because those didn't hurt. We'll be right back. It's such an emotionally charged issue in the African-American community that Chris Rock even spent the last two years making a documentary about it, and I'm talking about the term good hair. Please welcome sisters Sierra and Tatiana and Tara and her mother Sharon. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, so I'm going to start with you, Sierra. How do you um, describe your hair? My hair, it's a little wavy, but then again, it can be nappy but you can still get a comb through it when I don't have a perm. Okay. And it's kind of damaged. Okay, so it, w when you describe your hair as opposed to your sister's hair, do you think that you have bad hair? Compared to hers, yes. Compared like, to your sister, hers you, is you, you call gorgeous. it bad hair. Okay, and why? Because it's like, 
You could do anything with it as long, as pretty as the right color. Mine, it was before this, it was three different shades of brown. And it's just hard to like do anything mm -hmm. with it when it's not one complete shade. And she could wear it straight, curly, whatever she wants. And you have issues with your sister because of her hair? Yes. Like jealousy? A little, yes. Yeah. Did you, do you know that, um, Tatiana, that your sister um, is I so didn't... jealous? I didn't find out about the jealousy necessarily until recently. Mm -hmm. um, I do tease her a lot about her hair because I feel like um, she needs weave in it to, for it to be long like mine. Mm -hmm. But growing up, um, I was always teased about being the only one with the good hair out of the family. So I, I just, I guess I rebelled and mm -hmm. <laughs> do it to her. Do you think that, that your hair is, is good? I do her think that my hair is good. I don't need a relaxer or chemicals or anything in it. Um, I can straighten it, I can put some water in it and just go and it'll be curly mm -hmm. um, on its own naturally without chemicals, so I do it. Okay, and then um, we also have Sharon and Tara. Um, Tara, uh, why do you think your hair is uh, good hair? Well, I don't necessarily think, oh, I have good hair. I just think all hair is good hair. Mm -hmm. And I hate that there's so much self-hate within our community that, oh, I can't, you don't have the right kind of hair to go natural, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, I know that you said that your hair has controlled your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, well, I've always had a relaxer since I was 10. My hair was always long. And there were times when, like, I would need to work out and I would get a relaxer. I'm like, man, I'm not messing up this relaxer, <laughs> going to work out and sweating in it, that kind of thing. So, and I didn't, you know, whenever I would get new growth, which is when your natural hair starts to grow out and your relaxer meets. So I didn't like when I would need to get a relax. I mm -hmm. wouldn't, you know, want anybody to see me. I'd but be like, oh, I need to go to the beautician. But your hair is all natural now. I think oh, it's yeah. beautiful. It's all natural. So your so. natural hair is causing a rift with your <laughs> mother. Yes. She, whenever I cut my hair, because she likes my hair long and relaxed, and whenever I cut it, she did not like it. Like, one time I cut it, and she was like, get out, because mm -hmm. she hated it. Get out? Yeah. That's serious. Get so there's a strain on your relationship because of how she's wearing her hair now. Uh, yes, and it's been a very recent thing that she's decided to go completely natural. And I think it's just, it's an adjustment. It, it doesn't, um, she doesn't appear like my daughter. Uh, it's, what does it's that mean? Changed. What does that mean she doesn't appear like your daughter? It, it, it has changed her appearance in terms of overall how she looks. I always thought her hair was beautiful. I think long hair is nice. And I think there are people that wear their hair short that it's fine. But I've always been accustomed to her hair being longer. Mm -hmm. You avoid um, introducing her to people because uh, of her hair now? Recently, yes, because of the transition. It's been, a, it's, a, it's a change in her appearance. And you, and so I, you avoid introducing her to people? I feel, Mom, that you are trying to make it all sound nice. But well, it's not by nice. You I don't think it's necessarily were, uh, nice, but I do a avoid the introductions. And I think that's because I'm adjusting to her. Adjusting or shamed? Because uh, there's a big difference. <laughs> I think adjusting is, whoo, baby, I'm so not used to this hair on you. Let me take a look at it. I might not love it, but here's my daughter. Her yeah. name is Tara. Yeah. That's adjusting. Right. Ashamed is, I'm not going to introduce you. I can, think you can you admit that there is some shame? Well, I think that I'm not, I'm not going out of my way to make an introduction. Oh. Um, and because you feel people are going to think what when they look at her? I, don't, I think people will have no problems with her. I think she's a very beautiful, uh, it's her mother. It's an adjustment for me. So it's your problem. Correct. Yes. What do you guys have to say about this? Because they're talking <laughs> oh. like this and like this and like this and like this and who? Oh, and I just, it's an adjustment and I just, you know, I don't go out of my way to introduce people to her and I just, we, yes, I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Definitely this issue is generational. You have a lot of older women and men, especially men, who cry when their daughters cut off their hair. I have my, in my own personal experience, my grandmother, you know, was like, we worked so hard so that we didn't have to look like that. Why would you do that to yourself? And they have to have that kind of, our, the, the younger generation has to teach the older generation, you have been brainwashed essentially to think that this is the only way that you have to look. Because really, a lot of, for a lot of older generation, the hair thing, it wasn't just beauty, it was you're not going to get a job, you're not mm -hmm. going to walk in this room, you're not going to be able to find a, a mate if your hair isn't straight and conforming to mainstream society. So for a lot of them, it's an almost fear thing when they see their children 
going natural. So it's the job of the younger generation to educate. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, about hair, race, everything. Change. We'll be right back. Recently, a campaign was launched called My Black is Beautiful. It's featured in Essence magazine, and it celebrates African-American hair and the effort to get black women to start talking about how beautiful they are. Now, there were over 1,100 women that entered the search, and there were four winners, and two of them are here. We've got Kimberly and Yolanda. So did you guys have bad hair, good hair issues growing up as kids? Well, growing up, my mother never encouraged the term good hair. Mm -hmm. So I just... Um, I just appreciated that because it just allowed me to just accept my own hair. Mm -hmm. It was definitely thick and time consuming, so that's more, more so what I heard as far as growing up. Never encouraged good hair and bad hair mm -hmm. topics in my household. So. Good. And Kimberly, what about you? I had a lot of hair issues growing up because my hair is so big. You know, I was teased so much. I mean, people call me Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, <laughs> Shaggy Dog, Wet Mop. I've heard everything. So it was, it was just really hard, you know, because my hair was always so big and I always wanted yeah. tamed and I begged my mom for a perm and, and it was, it was really like bad a straight experience. perm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah straight so perm. So tell me why it was important for you guys to be a part of this Black is, My Black is Beautiful campaign with Essence. Wow. The My Black is Beautiful <laughs> campaign is an awesome campaign you know that just celebrates black beauty mm -hmm. and every type of black beauty that there is and right. you know we were chosen from the Pantene search which was a part of the my black is beautiful campaign mm -hmm. and it just you know kind of shouts to everybody saying you know my black is beautiful your black is beautiful right. her black is beautiful there's not one separate type of hair you know that's supposed to represent the black community but right. it's all beautiful I agree <laughs> Black is beautiful. And also, definitely, um, along with the My Black is Beautiful, just taking that inner beauty, that inner strength, and letting it translate to your outer, mm -hmm. and just letting, you know, what you already have on the inside, that self-confidence about who you are, and just taking ownership of your, your own personality and letting that just... An originality. You know, exactly. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. And it's about choices. Okay, so let's remind ourselves of Tahita. Remember her? Um, after much debate, I mean, she was at the top of the show with all the drama and the ladies debating on whether she should be natural or not. Tahita decided that she was ready to go natural. She wanted to give it a try. So uh, let's see what she looks like now. Come on out, Tahita. <laughs> Pretty. I can see your bone Thank structure. You. Uh, come right here. I can see your bone structure in your face. I couldn't see that when your hair was down and long before. So this is Eric Bland. He's a celebrity hairstylist. Eric's done me some a couple of times too. Tell us what you did to her hair because I like that you also pulled it back. But the texture is different too. How did you get her texture to go um, more curly? Well, actually, that's her natural texture. What I did was she had a lot of split ends, a lot of dryness from. The, uh, keeping the weave and putting gel. So what I did was I cut it and then it just brought her natural texture back. She still has a few straight ends only because she's not willing to go quite as short right now, but um, it'll eventually start to curl up because yeah. I got most of the dead ends off. So that's I like seeing your texture. face. I like seeing your forehead and like your cheekbones. I think that's really pretty. It's gonna take getting some use, getting used oh, to. Oh yeah, it? but you yeah. make it work and you look good doing yeah. it. <laughs> Me and you, girl, we're both working face. Nothing, we're not hiding behind. Uh -huh. Put your face down here. Let's get a little close up. Mm -hmm. Work, work. Smile with your eyes. Smile with your eyes. Smile with your eyes. message here today I think is about choices. I think it's about, you know, having options. But I think it is really important to understand that when we make certain choices, those choices do go back into history and there's a reason why we make those choices. Um, but I think everybody, you know, is free to make that choice, if that makes sense, right? When I wear that, I understand that there's a reasons why I do, or reasons why society thinks that that is beautiful. And I understand why I wear this, because I feel beautiful this way. All right, see you later.